Hey everyone. Today's video is going to be a video response, good old fashioned video response to Mr. T. Now, Mr. T is a good buddy of mine. We're in the Juices Loose podcast together, we often game together, we talk a lot behind the screens and all that kind of shit, and we often agree on a lot of stuff. And he uploaded a video asking what the fuck is the Venia and Metroidvania, and I thought, ooh, I got some opinions on this myself, so let's go. Now for those who wouldn't know, just a quick summary of what a Metroidvania game is. A Metroidvania game in general, some people have loose interpretations of it with specific elements changed, but the general gist is that you have a, a, a 2D side scroller with an open map system, you can go anywhere in the map, and throughout the game you progress, your character learns new abilities, you get new equipment, you get new attacks and specific ways to advance further in the game along like you backtrack through the game because you unlock something that allows you to go somewhere else that's a basic gist of it metroidvania is an interesting term i use it a lot it's one of my favorite genres of games i would personally call it the genre now that is not what is really a debate here mr t doesn't deny the fact that metroidvania games exist the idea is why is Vania being added to this in reference to the Castlevania games? Nintendo, okay, let's. Nintendo pioneered the idea of a Metroidvania type game when they released the original Metroid. Some people don't like the idea that the Vania from Castlevania got added to this, as in Metroidvania is this whole genre. That's what Mr. T is going at. Like, why would Castlevania deserve any of the credit for this type of game? And a lot of people seem to think that Metroid somehow made this whole genre. They created such an extensive library of games that follow these rules. But that's not even kind of close though. Now this video is going to have some of my personal opinions. But I'm going to toss in some random facts here and there. Now let's get one thing straight. Between the original Metroid and Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, there's a big gap already, and there's been many, many games that follow this formula. Among those games, we find the Battle of Olympus. We also find Legacy of the Wizard. And one of my personal favorites, one of the greatest games ever made, I feel, top 10 NES games for sure, Vexanadu. All of these games were developed and published before the second Metroid game was ever made. So the genre already existed technically, so that is not the question here. So you have Metroid, the original one. Then you got Metroid 2, after a whole bunch of games already followed the same formula. I think Metroid was in 86? Metroid 2 in 92? And Metroid... Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo in like 94 or 97, I don't know exactly. But, yeah, 94 I think it was. And that is it. That is it. A lot of people like to adhere to the fact that Metroidvania is something that Metroid brought to the audience. But that is already wrong. Like I said, many games. Xanadu, Legacy of the Wizard, Battle of Olympus, other games like Monster Boy and other systems, like a lot of games followed this formula before the second game even was released. And to evolve from this, if you just take into account Metroid, these three games, Metroid 1, 2, and Super Metroid, are the only Metroid games that even follow this formula to begin with. After that, you got like you had like what Metroid Pinball, you had like Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3, which is a completely new genre. You had Metroid um, other M, which is something completely different again. Like, it's not like all of Metroid games follow this specific type. So, when Nintendo stopped, stopped basically making Metroid after Super Metroid, three years later, Symphony of the Night came out. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. 
they took up this formula as well that many games already followed at that point. And Castlevania Symphony of the Night started following this formula as well. Which they hadn't done yet before. The original games you had like uh, Castlevania 4 which is one of my favorites. 1, 2 and 3. They don't follow this exactly. They follow more like what Adventure of Link did kind of. It's more that kind of style. It is not really a Metroidvania type game. So, Symphony of the Night came out. After that, more and more Castlevanias started following this formula. And then, I think it was maybe Konami themselves, I don't know, who referenced to games following Symphony of the Night as Metroidvania games. Just for them to specify the fact that the Castlevania games since Symphony of the Night followed the Metroid formula. It was basically an honor, like a nod, an acknowledgement that Metroid did start the idea of what Metroidvania is today. And then there was a dude. There was a dude. His name was something Parrish. I forgot his first name. Of Retronauts. And he started using this term as a genre. He is the person who made Metroidvania a sub-genre by itself. Like I said, it never was a subgenre by itself. After Metroid, you had all these other games, like I said. Battle of Olympus, Legacy of the Wizard, Pixanadu, there's like Monster Boy, there's so many games after that, before the second Metroid game was even made. And then Metroid stopped using this formula and Castlevania picked it up. So it's not like this thing didn't exist already. Metroid might have been the first one. Debatable as well. I don't have that much extensive knowledge on everything that is before NES. But let's just assume that this is what the facts are. Nothing changes that when they started using this term for Symphony of the Night and the games that followed the formula, it was an acknowledgement to Metroid. So they used Metroidvania for them to stipulate that Castlevania games starting at Symphony of the Night followed this formula as an ode to Metroid, basically. So they acknowledge it. And then this other dude, Parrish, he's the one who started using it as a brand, as a general term, for as a subgenre. So that is why it is Metroidvania. Because if you say it's a Metroid style game, first of all, like I said, it makes no sense. You have the first two, three games. And after that, you got like all the other shit. You got a pinball, you got the Prime Trilogy, you got other M, you got Federation Force. It's not like Metroid by itself is a genre. So adding the Vania, like I said, even Castlevania by itself isn't a genre. Only you're starting at Symphony of Night, you started using it. So saying Metroidvania simply stipulates the fact that when you combine the aspect of Metroid and the aspect of Castlevania, it creates a genre that sets it in stone when you see, combine the two. Then you, okay, well, Metroid uses this because Venus, this is what these games have in common. That creates Metroidvania. And that is my opinion on it. You shouldn't see like Metroid started this. Why is, Ca is Castlevania getting credit for it? That's not the idea behind it. The idea is that Castlevania picked something up, they molded it, they improved it, they gave credit for it, and by doing so, it became a genre. In my opinion, like I said, neither Metroid nor Castlevania truly deserves credit for this title. I feel Metroidvania, that's the point of it, Metroidvania by itself simply became a way to define a subgenre that didn't really have a name yet. When you consider all the games that already existed after the original Metroid, before the second one, when Metroid stopped, when Castlevania picked it up, after Castlevania, it is simply a great way because Metroid cannot be defined by Metroidvania and Castlevania cannot be defined by Metroidvania because both of these series simply do not always follow this exact formula. It is a great way. I feel nobody deserves credit. So why is Vania part of Metroidvania? And like I said, in my opinion, the answer is simple. To complete the essence of what defined a new subgenre of gaming since the 2000s probably where it just needed it sometimes a new genre needs to be created and this is this is simply what that is metroidvania metroid doesn't deserve credit for this title just as little 
as you feel Castlevania deserves credit to this title because neither game series are defined by this term but the subgenre itself simply requires it. So when Parrish coined this term as more than just Beyond Symphony of the Night for Castlevania, he did something that is simply benefiting a lot of gamers because it is a genre by itself and that is simply what it should be seen as. Nobody truly deserves credit for it. It is simply the name given to a genre that benefits so many today. Like I said, me, myself, personally, is one of my favorite subgenres. And you cannot call this subgenre a Metroid game. Because it, it, Metroid doesn't follow this formula always. And you cannot call this Castlevania either. So where you feel, like I said before many times already, where you feel Castlevania does not deserve credit in this title, I'm like, neither does Metroid. Metroid doesn't deserve credit to start. Castlevania acknowledged that Metroid pioneered the ID, but when Parrish brought this notion further as a subgenre that it is today, it goes beyond Castlevania and it goes beyond Metroid because it is its own thing. Now, I like I said, I love the subgenre. Like the, the idea of what it represents, that is not up for debate, that is not the idea. And Mr. T really was wondering where Vania comes from. And like I said, I did a bit of research, like I said, I tried looking actually, doing some digging in the term Metroidvania, and that is why when the, the shit with the dude with Parrish popped up and how he coined it and how they used, they used to use it just for Castlevania and then it, it evolved from there. So technically, if you see it like that, my Castlevania starting at 7th of night, started making these games. Acknowledging Metroid, it's really not such a bad thing. Because the origin of the term basically stems from Castlevania acknowledging the fact that Metroid started this. That's the research part. Like I said, for me personally, I don't feel Metroid has such a massive, um, a massive part to play in this term anyway, because Metroid stopped using their own formula pretty soon. And like I said, after the first game, so many other games started using it, and by now there's so many. You got so many beautiful games like Ori and the Blind Forest, um, Hollow Knight. There's a ton of games that use it for like Axiom Verge, like Mr. T Show, and I love the genre. I like 2D platformers are my favorite type of games, and I like the Metroidvania subgenre because it adds freedom to it. It adds freedom to it. It adds evolution to it. Often it adds RPG elements to it, and I just like the idea of. Exploration. And that's what Metroidvania really is about. Exploration. So there you go, Mr. T. That's my take on it. With a bit of research done for you. Where the term comes from. What it means to me. Thank you guys for watching this video. Check out Mr. T's video. It will be linked at the end of this video. That's a little video. And in the video description as well. My video. And let me know what you guys think. Check out Hollow Knight. Stay real.